Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about how to build a web server and what that looks like at a very low level. So at a very low level, we have our CPU, which has a number of registers and a set amount of memory. And with that, we can do uh, basically computation. We can do mathematical operations to start setting uh, registers, start accessing memory, pulling data from memory, putting data into memory, doing addition, etc. We can just do a bunch of math effectively. So what does that look like? In this case, we've got a very simple program. So let's say we start with moving REX into hex 1337. We've got this program loaded into memory. We've got other memory besides that executable memory, but we've got that program loaded into memory and we're about to move 1337 into the REX register. So we execute that instruction, it updates REX with 1337. Uh, we set our RIP, our next instruction to execute as well. Um, and we continue on to the next instruction. So in this case, we're executing this move RBX with this uh, address looking uh, value, which is going to also be reg uh, referencing memory. So we can see this 55555 thing. We can see in the top right, we've got memory with 555554000. Uh, we're loading in an address into RBX. And we're going to see why in a second. Uh, so we load that into RBX. We look at the next instruction. Again, we're getting ready to do another move instruction. In this case, we're moving RAX into the Q word pointer of RBX, as in dereference RBX, use that address and start writing to memory. So the first two instructions were just kind of updating registers. In this one, we're about to update memory. You can see our computer faithfully executes that. It updates memory with this value. You can see it's a little endian integer. So it's kind of like stored backwards for maybe what you might expect by default. We can do addition, right? The computer can do all sorts of things. We can do addition. So we're getting ready to add RAX hex 42. Got that instruction loaded. RAX gets updated by hex 42. And then let's say we want to do push RAX. We've got this concept of a stack within memory and we can push that value to memory as well. Bunch of operations that our CPU is going to faithfully execute. So what did we just do, right? What did we really just do? How did we impact the real world? Well, at a physical real world level, right, we didn't do much. We have these electrons sitting on the CPU and we moved them around and added some heat. Who cares? This is useless, right? All we're doing is this stuff that's just generating heat on a CPU. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't impact the world. Nobody cares. You grab a microscope, you can look at your CPU and you moved a couple particles around. It really doesn't matter. But why does it matter? Because as we all know, computers are amazing. They do all sorts of important things. Well, the way that they really matter is once we introduce hardware, right? We have monitors. We want to start displaying stuff on our screen, printing to a printer, talking to some router, some modem, talking with the internet, moving data around, right? This is where computation gets interesting. When we move out of the realm of just moving uh, electrons on our CPU and generating some heat, and we start you know, printing something, start playing a video of a cat, you know, whatever exciting thing you're going to do on your computer. Um, so the question is, how do we take all of these instructions? Because this is how we talk to our hardware. We have this sequence of instructions. We've got a CPU, we've got registers on that CPU, we've got memory. How do we use that to start, let's say, talking to the internet? What does it mean to start suddenly broadcasting, you know, radio waves through the air? What, what x86 instruction says broadcast uh, radio waves through the air. Um, well, unfortunately, if you want to access the hardware, uh, you can't. Basically, you're not allowed to. Um, if we're operating in a normal world, in this case on Linux, Linus says too bad you're not allowed to access the hardware. You are not cool enough to access the hardware. You cannot be trusted to access the hardware. Uh, your random program is not allowed to start creating radio waves. He says too bad. Uh, instead, what you have to do is you have to talk to the operating system. In this case, you know, you got to talk to the penguin. This is the, the mascot of Linux, uh, talks to the penguin. You got to talk to the penguin if you want to talk to the router. That is how you talk to the router. You're not allowed to just start talking to the router. And how do we talk to the penguin? We use the syscall instruction. So this is kind of really answering that question of how do we begin to start talking to the hardware? We're not allowed to talk to the hardware as a user space program. Instead, the penguin talks to the hardware for us and we tell the penguin how we want to, to talk to the hardware and it's going to interpret what we want and kind of make sure that what we're saying is cool, start doing permission checks, start doing security things, 
only creating uh, radio waves in the right way that radio waves should be created, etc. Right? We don't just have arbitrary access to that hardware. So we uh, we do the syscall instruction, which basically says, okay, go off to the kernel and have the kernel now perform this action on my behalf after it checks that that's good to go. So the way that we do that, for example, we move RX42. So kind of we're selecting the 42nd syscall. So uh, in this case, that's actually in uh, Linux as of the recording of this, that's kind of the connect syscall. So you kind of think of that as uh, maybe we're connecting out to the internet, it's a few more steps, but we'll say that that is uh, what we're going to do. Um, and now in return, the, the kernel gets this. Suddenly now code is executing within the kernel. It's talking to the router and we step along and the, the kernel tells our hardware what it wants to do. So that is how we are going to begin uh, interacting with our environment, doing more than just pushing electrons around. We are going to access the kernel and the kernel is going to act, interact with the real world on our behalf.